Okay, it's time to do our first proving ground kind of mini assignment. It's worth one and a half points. It's pretty easy to do as long as you meet the, the three criteria that are in the rubric. And this is all to build your knowledge towards creative problem solving. So this criteria is called identifying patterns. And the criteria are that you make sense of the data that's given to you before you solve the problem. The data that's going to be relevant in this project is understanding and accurately identifying the resolution of your images, both your creature image and the landscape that you put it into, which will yield a physical format, right? It will give you the potential for, can this only be shown on screens? Can this be printed? If it can be printed, at what size can it be printed? The second is to recognize commonalities among seemingly unrelated situations. So we've talked about lighting and color as we've been compositing, both for our landscapes and for our creatures. And of course, lighting and color is going to matter for integrating the two, making them match. But there are new commonalities. When you put something in an environment, it's also going to cast shadows. And when you put a figurative subject, something that moves into an environment, it can also disturb the environment. So if you have like a dusty floor, it's, it's going to be more believable and a better solution to that problem if you show a dust cloud or show that dust being disturbed at the base of your creature. If the temperature is really low and your creature is warm-blooded, then you're going to expect to see steam coming from its breath. These are all the the different commonalities that we might not relate to compositing that we need to start thinking of as we put our landscape together with a creature. It's the same kind of problems they had doing a film like Mary Poppins or Space Jam, where you're put, mixing animation and live action and taking photographic resources and putting them with hand-drawn resources. These are the things that have to be uh, understood. So. I'm going to just be looking at your, your uh, image and seeing if you utilized a common light direction and tried to fit the angle of your creature believably into the, the perspective of your landscape. And then novel problems in familiar terms. This is where you write an explanation that helps bridge the conceptual gaps between a fantasy creature in your landscape. So did you explain how your creature is intended to interact with its environment? Does it account for the atmospheric and practical concerns? Like how does your creature breathe? How does your creature shelter? How does it eat? Um, does it face any threats from the environment? Does it need to camouflage? All of these things are, are novel problems that you can introduce to help us understand your solution. So here's a past student example, just their creature. But in order to integrate it, they had to add atmosphere, cast shadows, change the lighting. This is what's called a non-destructive overlay layer. I'll show you how to do this. And then they integrate it into that environment in a way that looks fully believable. And then as part of the proving ground, they would write a description of how it, it sets into that place. So you can see that, you know, as the introduction to this assignment, these kind of descriptions. And you're also going to write what its resolution is and what its physical dimension is. Okay, so doing it for this semester, I'm going to integrate my fantasy creature into my fantasy landscape putting assignment two into assignment one. And the first thing I want is a clean PNG, which I just cut out. And I can always use this opportunity to fix other issues. So when I'm looking up close at my creature, this is a great time where I can do a non-destructive layer at the top. I'll label it clone stamp. 
This is a way to clean up on the merged layer all the little transitions that still need help. So on a new blank layer, I say clone stamp. I use the clone stamp tool. I'm going to keep it at 79 opacity. I'm going to have it sample from the current layer and below. And I have a fairly soft edge brush, but maybe not zero, maybe about 50. And here I can target some of the fur. And I can composite it in. Maybe I take my opacity down to about 30. And that way I can overlap this fur into the shadow a little bit more believably. Always moving where my target comes from. And being mindful not to soften too much. This black got a little too black, so I'm going to round out the edge of this by compositing a little bit of the shell. And then the fur here. Or the squirrel needs to be put in. Now remember, I put this all on its own layer so that I'm not destroying the pixels that are underneath it. And that way I can also use my eraser tools to work back some of the clone stamping. So this is a skill you build with time and with practice. And it's compositing, not painting, even though it feels very much like you are creating new pixels, you're really just in a very targeted way just rearranging the pixels that are already there. You use the sharpen tool between those two layers. Since clone stamping tends to soften, you can use the sharpen tool then to, to bring definition back. And this is basically for creature compositing a really, really effective fix-all approach. Because you can steal lighting this way, you can steal textures and transition. And then of course you can also dodge and burn your clone stamp. Layer separately from the layers underneath. Putting a shadow behind this front shell. And then as you correct things, then you get to steal from them again. And it's easy to be a perfectionist and just stay zoomed in. But I want to move on to other areas that need this. But that was the most glaring. You can also dodge and burn your original merged layer where you think you might need some, some more light, some more dark. And then if you lose saturation, the intensity of the color, that's where the sponge tool comes in. And you can use that to add saturation back in while keeping it just as dark or to take it away. This is an area where dodging and burning is necessary, I think. But I'm going to start with some clone stamping and extend some of these feathers out a little bit softer. A little bit softer now. A little bit softer now. And it extends the overlap I have between them. I can also just clone stamp some of the sharp edges that I need in certain places. Then I can always use my sharpen tool just on that clone stamp.
that can help bridge some of these gaps. So it's, it's pretty obvious when this gets overused. So I don't want to replace everything, and I like to do it at a low opacity. But it is a powerful tool that definitely has its, its place in your compositing practice. Now because it's on its own layer, if I overdo it, which we often do, especially with things like dodge and burn, I can always cut it out and adapt it with my own eraser. especially in this case where I want a softer edged eraser at a lower opacity. Okay, then I might want to burn again. Lighting really matters. This is all just internal, and this is all just before I put it into an environment. So I want to burn a shadow under those feathers. So it looks like the head's actually resting on the body. So a big improvement there. Okay. Then I can just kind of do a quick, quick hits of dodge and burn. Right now I'm burning that darkens shadows where I think there should be shadows. I always do it just in the midtones and I always do it under 30 because it's a powerful tool. If I clone stamp, I do it on a separate layer above. And I mostly do that to transition textures and lighting that look awkward. Sometimes even if they're just right from the photo reference, they can look awkward just because real life sometimes looks awkward. And you want to have better control of it in your work. The sharpen tool really helps. And then you can also, I'm going to use sponge and desaturate that a little bit. Oh, I'm doing the opposite. I'm saturating. So do pay attention to what your settings are. Okay. So that has the added benefit of improving your assignment to all of these little fixes. And so that's step one for your proving ground. Just make sure your creature is as complete and finished as it can be before we have to start compositing it into an environment. And that does a lot of your work for you. Start with good components. Fixing the hand a little bit here. Okay. So now Still weird he has that little leather strap there, but doing it for the deadline. So now I can save this. This is assignment two. Save it as a PSD. Keep the background turned off. Remember, because we want it to have no background when we save it. And then save it again as a PNG. And you can do this by saving it as a copy and then finding PNG as a format option. Digital format is different than physical format. It's going to go